Hello, fans and friends. I'm God War Boy. I'll be reacting to Feral Talks About Fisheye. When Feral Talks About Fisheye was uploaded, I went by the Patrickinator and my channel was not even a year old. The English dub clips included are from the Cloveway dub as the Viz Media dub of Sailor Moon Super S had not been released at the time Feral Talks About Fisheye was uploaded on YouTube. Throughout the video, I will do my take on Tiger's Eye as I will make him sound as goofy as possible. He sounded that way in the original Japanese version. Anyways, let's get started. My Mechanicles video was a huge success, mm -hmm. which for me means that it's finally time to kick off my other review series, one where I shall talk about other stuff than just games, TV shows, and movies. Mainly obscure characters, but we'll get into other stuff as well. And I know that a lot of people have compared my video to CR and his familiar faces reviews. This but is trust, what Baby Mario the similarities will end. Here. This sounds is like my time. own this slowly video. original series. What? I did a villain last time, and I'm doing a villain today. I'm on the villain street. I'm excused to steal. Anyways, for those who missed it during my last review, and how could you? I'm a fan of Sailor Moon. I love the show. Even if it's not perfect, it's still a lot better than most shows. One of my favorite bits was the Dead Moon Circus arc. This uh, may surprise other fans, because this arc seems to not get too much love, and yes, I know why. The idea of an evil circus trying to take over the world is stupid. The demons cannot be taken seriously, and the ones commanding them are little selfish brats. But before the annoying Amazon Quartet, there was someone else doing the dirty work. Amazon Trio? Are you there? Tiger's Eye, present! Fish Eye, present! Hawk's Eye, present! At your service, Master Zaconia! Tiger's Eye, present! You summoned me, Bab Zaconia? Ah, uh, yes, the Amazon Trio. Three animal servants, turned human by Zirconia, that are trying to find Pegasus inside dream mirrors of people with beautiful dreams. But why do I love them so much? Well, for once, they're adult, which makes it possible to take them seriously. Second, I like how they've got the fire, water, and wind deal going on, rather than just the wearing different colored dresses. And third, they've got a kick-ass theme song. It's been playing for a while now. Sure, they're the servants of darkness, but who says they can't have a chilly, jazzy theme song? I think the trio like it themselves. After all, they're listening to it all the time while sitting in their bar. Heck, even during the special beach episode when they are outside, they listen to it. Oh, relax. Keep your pants on. She's not so tough. I have a plan to make this girl surrender. Her weak spot's all I need to find. Bases are loaded and he's winding up with a pitch and there is a hit. Wow. Hey, don't change the station. I'll change the it if I like. It's my place. It's my radio. So sit oh. down. Now relax. I got this. All I have to do is find her weak spot. Everybody has a weakness. Hey, change it back. Now I could talk about the whole trio in detail and explain my fondness for them, but I've decided to focus on Fisheye today. Ah boy, Fisheye. Since the moment I've laid my eyes on her, I was in love. Even if she does have a set of weird uh, dragon fish-like hands and 
she does smell like fish, which does attract cats. Uh, but still, she's beautiful and she also has a lot of talents and skills. As for example, her lovely voice. Mm, Yama, hello, or Tiyama. Huh? You're thinking about Kriko, huh? I meant her voice in a proper dubbing! Nein, mach dir keine Sorgen um mich. Eigentlich tut mir Kiriko richtig leid, weißt du? Du musst versuchen zu verstehen, wie Mädchen sich fühlen. Mit allem, was sie tun, wollen sie nur, dass die Männer sie immer zu bewundern, sie schön finden und gern haben. Ich will das auch. Du? Also, warum siehst du mir nicht eine Weile zu? Und lässt mich zu deinem Traum werden. Oh. Oh. The, what about the Japanese original? Mm, pretty nice too, I guess. But wait, I always thought Akira was a male name. What? Why the hell would they hire a male voice actor to voice a female character? It's a man, baby! Come again? <laughs> wait, wait. Ooh, yummy. It's understandable to criticize the old societal norms that cause Fisheye to have an identity crisis, and it's not surprising to feel envious of Japan during your childhood. Well, many of you 90s kids and millennials, anyway. Growing up with Pokemon and My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, it was disheartening to see many of you struggle with the censorship of Sarah Moon a result of its release during a time when international society was quite conservative. With such con conservatism, Japanese media had little chance of avoiding censorship. The cultural discipline was lacking and technology was limited. Sailor Moon had to Confirm to Western society by restricting content to align with what was familiar and socially acceptable for children at the time. This meant that no character could be openly gay and male characters were stripped of any feminine traits. Consequently, Tiger's Eye's androgyny was hidden, Fisheye and Zoicide were given tomboyish female voices, and all homosexual relationships were altered to appear heterosexual or akin to Karen Smith-style relationships. I pity many of the countries back then because they were misunderstood about Naoki Takeuchi's vision of Sarah Moon. Not only that, they were blinded by the conservative societal norms. That's right. Fisheye was a guy this whole time. A gay transvestite one, no less. Truly a devilish combination. So, just like Suicide from the first arc, as a feminine homosexual, he was turned into a woman in many dubs. The Polish dubs seem to have went a step further and didn't even bother airing any episodes with him, regardless of the sex change. Hence, I never did get to see Fisheye in action as a kid. And I guess this is where I should go out and scream out how wrong it is and those homosexuals should be depicted in TV shows as well. <laughs> But I don't think I'll instead comment on how nicely it works out, because it's remarkable. All the other sex changes in Sailor Moon were rather pathetic. I mean, for example, Suicide didn't even have tits. It was hopeless right from the start. Unless... Oh, hi, honey. <laughs> 
You want to come and join us? We were talking about breast swell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations, Marcy. You finally get to go bra shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you how much easier it is to lug around small things. <laughs> Anyways, fish eye. The sex change does work out. After all, I know people who saw the Japanese original and even they didn't know that fish eye was a guy. And I can't exactly blame them. After yeah, all, it was only mentioned a few times. Norm. And even if they did the hear it, they probably thought it was a mistake or something. Even the heroes themselves till the very end don't know the truth behind Fisheye's gender. Fooled so many for so long. That's just amazing. And even if you guys find cross-dressing disgusting, at least give Fisheye credit for being so skilled at it. You don't find good cross-dressers every day. I'm glad I didn't watch Sailor Moon Super S as a kid. If I did, I would have been upset about Fisheye being changed to female and talking with a tomboyish voice. When I found out that Fisheye was actually a male character, I was happy. Many people didn't know that Fisheye was a guy because they were in a very conservative society at the time they were kids. In my view, I pitied the people who didn't understand that Fisheye was a guy all along. The conservative societal norms and people not understanding Naoko Takeuchi's vision of Sailor Moon was what led to many people mistaking Fisheye as a tomboyish beauty queen. Japan didn't mess around making Fisheye a male and I'm Happy he remained that way in the Viz Media dub of Sarah Moon. The Freakazoid clip was the summary of everyone's reaction to being led to believe that Fisheye being female was a lie. Make no mistake, Fisheye is no tomboyish beauty queen. Anyways, in the Viz Media dub of Sarah Moon, Fisheye was voiced by Eric Kimmerer. I like the male fisheye better. Female fisheye is just fisheye as a tomboyish beauty queen. Male fisheye is the funnier cross-dressing man many people know and remember. You know when Fisheye danced for me, she had the decency to tuck her balls between her legs. But this sex change is not perfect. Just think about this. She's around two horny guys who go after any pretty girl they see. Why would they ignore her? But the thing that always intrigued me was, does he or does he not want to be with Tiger's Eye and Hawk's Eye? He always complains how they've got bad taste when they pay girls, but maybe that's just him being jealous that they don't pay him any attention. Then again... But I wonder, just maybe I'm more your type of guy. Uh, are you nuts? No way I'd have any interest in you! Okay, okay, <laughs> sorry I asked, you whatever, no dude. Brains. So... Would you prefer the strong manly big brother types? Okay, okay, sorry you're upset. Whatever. But then... Who are you calling a geek? Step up! Are you making fun of me? <gasps> That's huh? enough! Hmm. Please! You shouldn't fight over me like this! Oh, please! Huh? Huh? I said you shouldn't uh, fight over me like this! Get a life! We're not fighting over you! You're such a joke! You're not? Seriously? Well, listen here, buddy. We're not fighting over you. Gosh, someone's got extreme mood swings right there. Bitches, huh? What are you gonna do? 
I've had a suspicion that there might have been something between him and Hawkside. Shame they never had a team-up episode. Ah, oh, well, we still have a lot of memorable episodes. Like the one where Fisheye Spray is a homosexual fashion designer and he instantly notices that Fisheye is a guy. Or the episode where Fisheye goes after Mamoru. That's right, our main male hero is being stalked by a gay transvestite. Also, like every member of the Amazon trio, Fisheye also came up with a special plan to capture Pegasus. And while Hawk's Eye's cage was a dud and Tiger's Eye's the dream thingy didn't work at all, Fisheye's plan was actually pretty good. His demon created a force field that blocked away Pegasus and the Sailor Scouts from Sailor Moon and Chibi Moon, which left them helpless and alone against the might of Fisheye. God, he's like Napoleon in a drag. What could possibly let this plan fail now? So here, take this! <sighs> no, you don't give up, do you? Take this! And this, and this, and this, and this, and this, that's it! Surrender now, idiot pumpkins! Okay, Fisheye froze. Like a girl. But then he pulls out his rapier! But then his plan fails before he can use it. No, and we never mm. got to see him use his awesome rapier ever again. But if you're still thinking that Fisheye is just another stereotypical homo who just happens to be portrayed a bit less offensive, Think again. He's not only a memorable character, but also an interesting one. When I was at first preparing to make this video, it was meant to be me talking about just another overly feminine comma sexual, but as I rewatched all the episodes one after another, damn, he's so good at acting like a woman that I can't call it offensive. Or maybe it's um, just because I'm finding him very attractive. Still, he's not just looks, he's got quite a bunch of redeemable qualities such as intelligence or overall a human heart with emotions. I just really like him. I can't help it, I keep watching him and I keep forgetting that I'm dealing with a guy here. Well, I'm certain I'm not the only guy without a problem. Tiger's Eye. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. Say, Eric, do you like fish sticks? Yeah? You like putting fish sticks in your mouth? Yeah? Well, what are you, Eric? A gay fish? Did somebody say... Gay fish? Right. <clears throat> In deference to Naoko Takeuchi, I regard the Viz Media dub as superior. Tiger's Eye shouldn't have been depicted as excessively masculine, which was a misrepresentation of his character. That's how he was portrayed in the Cloverway dub. The censorship in Sailor Moon, regardless of its audience, was inappropriate and disrespectful to Naoko Takeuchi's creation. This shy, known for his gender ambiguity, added to the confusion by wearing women's attire and pursuing boys. I find Fisheye endearing for his feminine appearance and the humor in his impersonations of a girl. A less masculine portrayal of Tiger's Eye also contributes to the comedy. My appreciation for, for the Feral Talks About Fisheye video inspired me to create a reaction video. I reject the Deacon Clover dubs for turning Naoko Takeuchi's work into a farce, particularly with 
Fisheye's identity crisis. With a better understanding of Sailor Moon as Naoko Takeuchi's creation, it's understandable why many people have embraced the Viz Media dub. As an avid fan, I favored the Viz Media dub for its fidelity to the original version and its respect for Naoko Takeuchi's vision of the franchise. I honor Naoko Takeuchi for crafting Sailor Moon, a series that authentically represents gay culture. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to Feral Talks About Fisheye. I will do some more reaction videos sometime in the future. They will be done occasionally. Until next time, this is Gobble Boy signing off. Thanks for watching.